<laughs> All right. Good afternoon, everybody. But just just to let you know, I, I'm Craig Thompson. I'm going to be hosting this afternoon session as well as the first presentation here. Uh, a little bit of background about myself, and then I'll introduce everybody else as they go to their presentations. But a little bit about myself. I spent almost 25 full years as a quality manager and a quality director, uh, the majority of it in aerospace, but pretty much every kind of manufacturing environment you can think of from sheet metals to textiles and bonding, complex machining, uh, pretty much ran the gamut. So uh, I was also over many of the special processes as well and the NADCAP certifications, uh, as well as the QMS certifications. So I'm currently part of, uh, on a couple of the IAQG committees, within uh, the AAQG here in the U.S. Um, so I just wanted to share from the conference last week um, or a couple weeks ago in San Francisco, just some of the things that are coming down. So everybody's kind of aware of them ahead of time and, and some of the revisions that are coming and some of the other new standards that are coming. Um, we're going to talk about the revision of AS9100 and like I said, some of the other aerospace standards. So this is kind of a little bit of agenda for, for my presentation here this afternoon. A uh, little bit of background of IAQG for those that don't know. Not everybody always understands what IAQG and, and kind of who the players are. Uh, we'll talk about the current status of AS9100. Well, a little bit about 9145 status. I'm not going to go too in-depth to that because the, the next presentation after mine is going to be on AS9145 and some of the APQP stuff that's changing. Uh, I will talk a little bit about revisions to the Supply Chain Management Handbook and then a little bit of some new things that are coming. So, all right, so a little bit of background on the IAQG. All that acronym stands for is International Aerospace Quality Group, for those that don't know. Uh, it, it's a global organization. It is headquartered out of, out of Brussels in Belgium. They are responsible for setting and creating the quality standards uh, throughout the aerospace supply chain. It is made up of three different sections, the American Aerospace Quality Group, the Asia Pacific Aerospace Quality Group, and then, of course, European Aerospace Quality Group. And you can kind of see some of the players here in the U.S. Uh, it's quite it's quite a few of the OEMs, right? Boeing, GE, Lockheed, Honeywell, Parker, uh, Spirit, Textron, you know, to name a few. Uh, you can see there there's over 22 different members. And there's different levels of membership, right, within IEQG. Some are full members and, and have voting privileges, and others are just uh, affiliate members and help with writing of the standards and, and things like that. Asia Pacific has over 25 different member companies. Some of the big ones, Korean Aerospace, Mitsubishi, and Heavy, and Kawasaki Heavy, as well as Subaru. And from the European Aerospace Quality Group, Rolls-Royce, of course, BAE, Safran, uh, Turkish Aerospace. So that just that's kind of who makes it up. There are other companies such as Omnex and a few others that help with writing of the standards because uh, we do a lot of the training and things like that. So even organizations like ourselves that don't actually make a product, but we perform services. So we're also sort of include a little bit. So. Some of the big things that came out of the meeting, just a little bit, um, Eric Jeffries, uh, that's from Textron, uh, was just voted in as the new IAQG president overall. Um, he took the place of Andy Mayer, so he seemed pretty excited about that. Uh, I've known Eric for quite a few years uh, from my past life as well, before coming on board here with Omnix uh, about seven years ago. There's 20, there's 26 currently published standards within the AS9100 series. Uh, some of them you've heard of probably 9110, 9120, uh, 9115, uh, 9146 for FA, 9102. So within that whole 9100 series, there's 26 that are currently published. There's eight that are under revision right now, and we're going to talk about some of those, as well as there's four new ones that are coming out. Um, they don't all have numbers yet, so I don't know for sure. They're going to be part of the 9100 series, or they're going to be other aerospace documents. So a little bit about the current status of AS9100. So the, the biggest thing to remember is AS9100, it's going to be moving to IA9100, and it's actually going to roll from Rev D to Rev F. Uh, Rev, 
Rev E, they started it when ISO started their uh, revision. Uh, then the pandemic happened and everything kind of got pushed to the right. And the, the ISO revision is kind of still on hold. So in an effort to move forward to make sure aerospace, you know, stays ahead of the game, they're going to go ahead and move to IA9100 and Rev F. And IA just stands for International Aerospace. It will be one standard for everybody, so they won't have the AS or the EN or the JISQ in front of, in front of it. They will all be IA. So. Also, you can see there's there's a few key changes. We'll talk about these a little bit. Um, some of them we'll talk a little bit more in depth. Product safety is going to be a big area of concern that's being added to the new standard. Um, they are going to add a lot more information on the actual safety management. So not just product safety, um, but also safety of the personnel handling the product, right? As well as some key safety things. They're going to take some of the stuff from 45,000 and ISO 45,001 and put it in there as well. And so they're going to expand Clause 813 a little bit. Uh, information security. We all know ISO 27001 is getting to be a lot bigger player, especially here in the U.S. with all the companies, regardless of the industry. So there is going to be a lot more things added to that. Um, they are adding a new clause, 717, which is going to just be on information security. And they're also going to add some stuff to clause 8.1 for operational planning and control. They're, going to, they're also going to add some information security portions to that as well. Quality culture requirements. Um, there's an ISO standard out there, 10,010. Um, they are going to take a lot of that information and include it in clause 714 for the environment, environment, sorry, the environment of operation of processes. Uh, our, our last uh, presentation this afternoon will just be on quality culture. So that'll we'll go a lot more in depth into that uh, later this afternoon. Counterfeit parts is going to be expanded with a lot more definition as well as what your internal program requirements are gonna to need to be. Uh, that's gonna be part of clause 814 uh, for counterfeit parts, uh, which is good because a lot of aerospace companies have had this in the past. It's been around for a while. The FAA made sure to leave it in AS9100. Uh, it's been around for quite a while, but it, it's kind of the wild west situ situation right now where all the different suppliers are kind of doing counterfeit parts their own way. Uh, so they're going to put a little more definition in and some of the more requirements around what your program looks like. Um, another big one is MSA, Measurement System Analysis. Right now, it's just going to be added as a note within Clause 715. And control plans are also going to be added to a note within Clause 8. Um, both of those are straight from AS9145, which is the APQP standard, which the, the presentation after mine is going, is going to be along those same lines, so that'll be more in-depth as well. But they, they, are, they are very big on adding a lot of references to APQP activities within the new IA standard, uh, but they're not going to define the how. That's still going to be left up to the organizations. Right? So they're going to give us the requirements and say, thou shalt do this, uh, but they're not going to define how we do it. Um, some other key changes as well. 8.1, they are going to add note, or not note, but uh, Clause K is now going to include FOD definitions, uh, both capital D for damage and small d for debris within operation planning and control. And also the, the existing note or Clause K in 8.4.3 is going to be expanded to include FOD prevention at external providers and how we handle that. Ethical behavior. Uh, I didn't put specific clauses to this one because it's going to be quite a few places in the standard. Uh, it, it's going to be all right up there, almost the equivalent to how many times risk is in the standard. Uh, ethical behavior is going to be pretty much everywhere it says risk. We're also going to have ethical behavior. Uh, one of the uh, also other big things that we talked about at this last conference is the the more prevalent uh, of a conversation all suppliers should be having about statutory and regulatory requirements. Uh, one of the things they stressed is 
that those requirements take precedent over your QMS and the customer requirements. Um, unless you already have more stringent requirements in your QMS, then, then you're fine. But you have to make sure you are meeting those statutory and regulatory requirements. And it doesn't apply to all new product suppliers, right? New new product manufacturing, uh, but uh, it's gonna. There's a lot more in depth uh, for the 9110 folks for repair and overhaul. So, and then there's some other changes. Uh, they're going to give us some more definition about process identification and process verification, and, and also expanding clause 10 for continual improvement. Um, and they're going to reference using the AIM which is the aerospace improvement maturity model. Uh, for those that have not seen that, have not seen AIM, you, you can go out to the IAQG website. Um, up at the top, there is a uh, button to click on that says AIM. And you have to register. It is free registration. The only information you really have to give is your name and your, your work email. They're, they won't accept like Yahoo or Gmail accounts, but you know you can use your work email and sign up, but it's free and you have access to it. And it's not just for quality folks. Anybody within or within in the organization can uh, register for that access. So now the big thing everybody's probably wondering, um, IA9100F, it's currently in a working draft. Uh, the coordination draft is supposed to come out in November of this year. Uh, that's the draft that goes around for voting and for comments. And they, they take all those votes and all those comments and they go back and find where they need to make some additional changes, if any. And it's set for right now publication in October of 2024. Uh, once it is published, just like normal, uh, you'll have the standard 18 months for implementation. Uh, so, or if your certificate runs out, expires before that 18 months is up, you kind of have to do it before your certificate runs out. So just keep that in mind. October 2024 is, is the date that's currently out there now. All right, so a little bit about the current status of AS9145, which is APQP. Okay. Um, I, I will tell you early on in my career, aerospace would talk about APQP and then it would go away and then they would talk about it again and then it would go away. It's here to stay, right? Now they have their own standard and it's here to stay. Um, and there are quite a few OEMs that are starting to flow it down to their suppliers. Um, in the work we do here at Omnex, I do know of quite a few Lockheed, Honeywell, uh, Boeing, uh, Pratt & Whitney, just, just to name a few, have already started flowing it down to their suppliers. Uh, so if you have not gotten a copy of AS9145 and are not up to date on that, you, you may want to. Uh, after you leave our, our session this afternoon, you may want to get a copy of that so you can kind of get ahead of the curve. Um, some of the key changes to 9145, though, is some of the flow down requirements that are going to be throughout the supply chain as far as how you have oversight over your suppliers and their APQP programs. They're also going to include some more definitions and clarifications uh, centered around the non-design responsible suppliers, which is the majority of aerospace suppliers. And one of the big things is that they are also going to add some additional requirements on how to better define roles, responsibilities, and authorities, uh, also centered around your APQP program. Um, it does kind of get overlooked a lot. Um, and then also enhanced requirements for PPAP submittals and approvals. Right now, there, there's some there's some good definition around how you have to submit your PPAP and what has to be included. But there's not a lot of definition in the standard for the OEMs that says how they should have to approve it and, and making sure they do approve it. So I do I do know a lot of aerospace suppliers have submitted PPAPs in a year ago and are still waiting on an approval to come back from the OEM. So right now, the new one, 9145, is, is projected for late 2024 or early 2025 publication. Um, it is still in the work. It is still only in a working draft situation. Uh, they have not come out with a definite date yet. So, and like I said, the next presentation, they're going to go into this a little bit more in depth on changes to APQP. Um, so you'll get a little more information on that as well. All right. Current status at SCMH, or if, for those that do know it, that stands for Supply Chain Management Handbook. Okay. It is a very good tool to use um, that's available through IEQG. Uh, it comes in handy in quite a few, quite a few Quite a few different areas of your QMS, it comes in handy. 
Um, but some of the things they are changing, they're going to change a little bit in Section 3.2 around first article inspections. Um, they're not changing the standard. They're not revising that as far as making changes to what you have to do for 9102. Uh, but it's going to be centered around just adding some more clarification uh, in some response from audits and, and emails and questions. They're going to do some things around that. They're also going to add some better definition around design risk analysis, right? Uh, which is within the QMS, but kind of outside the QMS because it's more engineering related. Right? 343, they're going to add some FOD risk assessments, how to do risk assessments on your own organization around your FOD program. So some standardized checklist type questions. There's revisions underway on supplier capability assessment questionnaire. So they're developing this questionnaire that's going to be part of section 414 on, and it's really going to be centered around how to evaluate your suppliers um, rather than the old desktop audits that we used to all send out as quality managers. And we would hope we would get them back and we were hope they would be honest when they filled them out and not just pencil whip them through and send them to us, right? So they can stay on our approve list. So they are changing up the assessment a little bit uh, and standardizing it, as well as adding additional stuff in there on their actual capabilities rather than more or less a do you have it or not situation. So, and then the big one, and this is one of the committees I'm on now um, with Omnex as part of IEQG, is in section 715.1, we are... That, that's already a section that exists on remote technologies for audits and product acceptance. Um, but we are in the middle of creating an actual IA standard that will further define if, if you're, if you are going to either host a remote activity or perform a remote activity, uh, it has a lot of the requirements that are going to be centered around that and things you have to do as an organization to make sure that, remote activity one you can actually you know it's feasible to do it and two you can actually accomplish all of the audit objectives or witnessing testing or inspection objectives or whatever that might be so but it has not been given a number yet that was my first question at the conference do we have a number yet and they told me no so so this last little section right here some new standards um like I said, the remote application of information communication technologies, that's the new one I was just talking about that's coming from the SCMH. Uh, we are also taking information from NAS 413, which is um, National Aerospace Standard. Um, a lot of that is Lockheed and NASA driven for the NAS standards. Um, so we're taking a lot of information from there as well as the information letter that the FAA sent out on remote activities as well. We're taking a lot of good stuff from them. Uh, one of the other big things, even though it's not a standard, OASIS, OASIS database is version three. Um, it's not fully out there yet. There are some suppliers who are testing out the functionality of uploading documents right now. Uh, they have made a lot of changes. Uh, it is more user-friendly now to get in there and look at things within OASIS, even for suppliers. Um, but there is some, some tweaks they are still making based off user comments and things like that. And, and a lot of it will be towards uploading documents as well. So, and then the last one right here, AIM, which is the aerospace improvement maturity model. It's changed. Uh, it was at version 1.0. Now it is version 1.1 and version 2.0 is set to come out probably sometime in 2024. Um, so, and it, it's not really changing it too, too much. Uh, again, if you go to AIM through IAQG, you can log on there. You can see uh, the different modules that it has. There's 26 different modules. Um, you can do a full assessment, do your entire QMS and see where you stand maturity wise, or you can go module by module and only pick certain areas of your organization as well. So, all right, with, with that, I will end mine.